Hello, it is Ironhead41. Uh, this will be the windmill generator alternator part three, I think. I uh, ran into a little snag. See, I was wanting the Delco 200 amp output alternator, uh, but it's not going to work with this fan. <laughs> I didn't take it into consideration the way these blades is turned. Uh, I like the way it's turned. It's like an airplane wing. So this little thin part is what is just to be cutting the air and the air force that's hit the wind force that's hitting it will be on this heavy side and I think that'd be a lot better. Um, so but it turns counterclockwise. Oh that that's that's a major issue. So I had to <laughs> go smaller. This is a one hundred amp alternator. Uh, because it is a Honda and it turns counterclockwise so I couldn't go with the clockwise Delco ain't that some but that's okay even at a hundred amp that's pretty good uh, but here's the best part this pulley the pulley ratio on this this thing measured all the way around circumference I think you call it is 36 inches this one here this pulley here is six inches so that means for every revolution of this um, this turns six times. I get two revolutions per second out of this. I'm getting 12 revolutions out of this. Multiply that by a minute and that's about 750 revolutions. This 100 amp alternator, unlike the um, 220 amp alternator at 1200 RPM, this is a low RPM at 750. So even at a four to five mile an hour wind, I'm getting 100% output out of this Honda alternator at 100 amp. But I really wanted 200 amp because I wanted to shorten my battery charging time. Okay, another question someone mentioned about a brake. I should put a brake on this. We get a big thunderstorm, 40, 50 mile an hour gust. This thing will just go out of control and possibly break some blades. I don't think these blades will break. They're heavy duty aluminum. Uh, heavy duty locks and brackets, uh, stainless steel uh, U bolts. So, this thing ain't going nowhere. I mean, just absolutely nowhere. This thing should be able to withstand 100 mile an hour winds without coming apart and breaking a blade. So, I don't see no use for a break. Okay, also, uh, someone mentioned I should use a chain. Well, here's the, here's the problem with using a belt. See, when you put this big belt and you put it on a small pulley, <clears throat> get my hand on there, see, when it changes its form, that's a lot of resistance, so that gives you a lot of drag. But I'm not going to use that belt. I'm going to get a smaller belt. I'm going to keep this pulley as close to this one as possible. So when the belt travels, it barely has to bend. See what I'm saying? Once I get this one on here, then I can just measure and go get the belt. If it measures uh, 42 inches, I can go get a 42 inch belt or whatever the size is. So the less travel, because I saw uh, one guy did a video, he did a video, posted his response to part two, and he had his alternator sitting way up high and the belt had to really form a lot. So to keep it close and let the belt barely bend, I think will be a lot less resistance and a lot less drag. So next I'm going to build a bracket for this thing and we'll put it on. That'll be part four.